Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the new Achilles firmware on the Yusheen Pro 58 module for Fat Shark goggles. And as you know, uh, in a previous video, I was talking about my FPV setup and my goggles and my antennas and all that, and I was previously using the uh, RX 5808 uh, Relay CC dual diversity module here uh, with the Achilles firmware, but now uh, the developer of the Achilles firmware's name is George Chrysostomos, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the name, sorry. Uh, he uh, sent me this module with the firmware already on it and the way that uh, you could get the firmware on this module is you have to actually buy the module separately he doesn't actually sell the module with the firmware so you buy the module um, and then you flash the firmware onto it I'll put links to all of the instructions on how to flash and everything in the description down below and then all the links to where you can get the, uh, the firmware the firmware for the Pro 58 does cost uh, money uh, this time Whereas the one for the 5008 was, uh, I believe, free. I think it's 11 euros for the firmware, so you should keep that in mind. But the Yishin, um the Pro 50 module is really inexpensive. It's like $25. Uh, so if you combine that with the cost of the firmware, I believe it's still less than the cost of the RX 5808, which is, I think, about $45. Now, even though the module is very inexpensive, it's actually quite powerful with the Achilles firmware on there. And let's go ahead and we'll plug this in. And we do have this uh, little scanning bar going across the screen here. I'm not sure if it's coming out on the video or not, but I can see that on my camera screen. So you don't actually see this in real life. It has to do with the uh, update rate of the um, screen versus the recording rate of the video. Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the features of the new firmware. And I've uh, plugged in a video transmitter, so we have something transmitting so that the receiver here can lock onto some of the signals. Uh, basically, to get into the... Um, modes here you press the little button here on the side and then you can cycle through the different modes so the, the one of the modes is ultra search there's going to be manual search there's favorites event mode fast mode band scan model find there's a settings menu Kerberos is an experimental mode lap timer another mode so a whole bunch of modes here I think much more than was on the original Achilles firmware on the um, RX 5008 and a lot of these are the modes that are the same as before work the same as um, on the previous firmware so I, I typically use the ultra mode the most because it will if you press the button here press it again it'll lock into it'll basically scan the entire band very quickly and it'll lock into what it thinks is the best signal and I have something transmitting on Fat Shark 7 which is 5860 but it actually found the best RSSI is on 5866. So using this mode will will give you the best uh, signal, um, will actually lock into the best signal no matter what video transmitter you're using because sometimes the uh, video transmitters will vary a little bit and the, the, the highest RSSI won't actually be on the actual channel that's uh, registered. 5860 will be something perhaps a little bit off from the center. Okay, so we'll try another mode here. So under manual search, you click this um, it actually goes through the frequencies one by one so as you dial uh, click the button down it actually increments the frequency by one at a time it actually goes through each of the channels so I don't I almost never use this, this mode it's kind of takes too long ultra mode is very fast I can, I can lock onto a channel very quickly I almost never use the manual mode and then here under favorites here you can um, save certain channels to your favorites. I think it's up to, f uh, I think it's eight channels. And then you can cycle through your favorites here once uh, all those are saved. I don't actually use this at all. I just use the ultra mode. So, but if you want to save certain frequencies, you can do that. Under invent mode, this is pretty good for when you have a bunch of people flying at the same time. You click in here and they'll find all of the stuff that is currently active. And it'll, find, it'll find all the channels that have our, our transmitting and then you can then cycle through the different ones that it found so it's, in this case it found two for some reason it found b8 and f7 5860 and 5866 so you can cycle through those two if you want of course if you're in a, an event and there's multiple uh, pilots flying then you can uh, lock onto all the pilots that are flying or and then uh, quickly search or quickly cycle through the different channels that are, are transmitting so you can watch different piles very quickly by just toggling the dial up and down here uh, down the left. Fast mode is similar to manual mode. It just goes through 
each of the individual channels one by one. So you can see E3, 4, 5, and the corresponding frequency. You can just do that if you if you just want to go on by the the known channels. You can use the fast mode. The band scan mode will actually scan the entire band and then show you where the best RSSI is, and you can see where certain things are transmitting. So if you're in, a, in an area that has a lot of RF uh, interference, you could scan the band here with uh, with your video transmitter not transmitting and see where there's spikes, and then maybe uh, avoid those areas, uh, avoid that part of the band, and, and move your tra video transmitter to a different part of the band that is not as noisy. Model find is just like it was working before. Uh, you click on this and then use the uh, the B receiver here, put a patch antenna on here, and then you could uh, basically point the patch antenna away uh, from or in the direction of where your model is, and then your RSSI signal will increase when it's pointed towards your model, and it'll decrease when it's pointing away from it. Here are the settings menu. We'll go back to that in a second. There's this experimental mode called Kerberos. If you go in here, the, the, a, the A antenna will lock onto a certain channel, and then the B antenna will actually kind of float around this uh, the, the the center of that uh, this channel here at so say for example it's at 5436 it'll the beach the B antenna will float around 5436 and find like here for example it's 5435 and it'll try and find the best signal um, and it'll show you the best signal uh, between the two antennas and sometimes it's not going to be on exactly the channel you're looking at it might be one or two megahertz off and this this mode here Will actually uh, give you the best video if you have, like, say, like a video transmitter that doesn't seem to transmit at the, the proper frequency. You're kind of drifts around, then this mode might be useful. There's a mode called lap timer. So if you go in here, you put a, a patch antenna on antenna B here, and uh, it uses that based on the RSSI on, on antenna B. You can measure your laps based on how far away and close you are to your location. So I'm assuming it's it's going to uh, do the laps based on where you are, and when you pass nearest to where you are, it'll consider that a lap, and then as you go further away, the RSS that drop, and then uh, when you come back again, and it increases at the maximum RSSI, they will count that as a single lap. Okay, we'll go here into the settings, and uh, I'm not going to cover everything here, but I'm going to go down here to alarm. You could use the buzzer here to set your uh, whatever RSSI will trigger the alarm. In this case, it's going to be 10%. Let's go back here and see. You have to actually do something quickly in the settings, otherwise it'll, it'll, it'll kick you out of the settings menu. So here you can change 10, 20, 30, or off. So I'm going to set it to 10. If you if your RSSI falls below 10%, it'll start beeping at you. Okay, there's this function called OST. You can turn that on, and uh, that will actually give you all these menu functions in your goggles inside the screen inside here. That's a feature of the a new feature of this particular firmware. It doesn't exist anywhere else as far as I know. And all of the basically every single uh, menu function that you're performing here on this screen will show up on the screen inside the goggles. Yeah, so definitely having the uh, OST function is pretty interesting. Uh, I've been able to use the module just using the dial here and not have to take the goggles off my face. Next, I can cycle through every particular function that I want to use and uh, not have to take the goggles off my face to look at the menu of the screen here. You can see everything here inside the screen that's on the goggles, so that's a really convenient feature and I like that a lot. Okay, so um, I guess a lot of questions, people are going to be asking me questions about whether this one, the Pro 58, is better than the RX 5808. And I would say that with this firmware, it's definitely better. It's Everything seems to work faster and it has to do with the processor that's on the Pro 58. It's like a newer... CPU, it's it's like a 32-bit CPU or something like that, and I think that's much faster than the one that's on the uh, 5808. So things like uh, like when you do your searches for your channels and uh, any kind of functions on here are, happen very quickly and much faster than they do on the 5808. So that alone makes it a really good feature. The OSD uh, feature is also really good and not on the 5808, so I definitely would uh, get the Pro 58 and get the new firmware for that. The other question people are going to ask is, how is the reception of this versus the 5808? And I would say it's pretty much the same. I honestly couldn't tell much difference. You know, I, I normally fly with the um, the Menace RC Bandicoot antenna here for a lot of the micros I fly with, the linear antennas. And then I've been 
lately experimenting with the new Foxier uh, Lollipop antenna here. This is sort of like a Axie clone, uh, very similar in performance. I this, this works pretty well, and I've been using these two antennas with the Pro 58, and I've been getting pretty good uh, solid performance overall with this setup. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this module. I'll put links to all the stuff, including the RC Groups thread, and links to the website for the firmware updating instructions, etc., in the description below. So please check there and all those links if you have any questions about how to update the firmware and, and actually obtaining all this stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.